Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's 9.30, Liz. Let's get started. Sure. I'm ready, Mr. Bay. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Liz Kukla and I'm the Secretary of the Board of Zoning Appeals. And I'm gonna read the preamble for you this morning, this Monday, April 8th. In compliance with notification requirements of the city's open meeting law in section 101.021 of the codified ordinances of Cleveland, Ohio, 1976, notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. All boards and commissions under the purview of the city planning department conducts its meetings according to Robert's rules of order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by voice vote. Abstentions from any vote due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to the taking of any vote. In order to ensure that everyone participating in the meeting have the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raise hand feature before asking a question or making a comment. The raise hand feature can be found in the participants panel on the desktop and mobile version and activated by clicking the hand icon. Please wait for the chair or facilitator to recognize you and be sure to select unmute and announce yourself before you speak. When finished speaking, please lower your hand by clicking on the raise hand icon again and mute your microphone. We will also be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. The chat feature can be activated by clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. Please note that call-in users can unmute by using star six. All meeting activity is being recorded via the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed via YouTube for public view. We have provided a link to the meeting for those who wish to speak on a particular case via our website and email. All requests to speak in a particular matter have been considered. We've also received emails from those who provided written comment on a particular matter. Back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Would you like to call the roll, please? Sure. Ms. Wilson will be absent this morning. Uh, Ms. Roca? Present. Ms. Holzer? Present. Ms. Brown? Present. And Ms. Bates? I am present. Madam Chair, we have a quorum with four members. We should announce that with four members, the appellants risk a tie vote. If there is a tied vote, the decision of building and housing remains the same and the variance is denied. So at this time, if the appellants would like to request a postponement to a later date when we would have five members, they can. Well, not seeing anyone, Liz. That's right. All right, thank you. Then I will announce that we have no postponements or withdrawals this morning. Excellent. All right. We'll begin with calendar number 24-038. Ms. Holzer. Madam Chair, with Ms. Wilson out, who will be, uh, who should I direct the oath to? Uh, Ladies, uh, Ms. Brown, Ms. Roca, which of you would like to do the oath today? We're happy to do it. Thank you, Ms. Brown. There you Thank go, you. Ms. Holzer. All right, then um, good morning, everyone. Our first case is calendar number 24-038. This is a violation notice at 1055 Ivanhoe Road. 216 Real Estate LLC owner, uh, parenthetically uh, to the care of Jason Lewis, appeals under the authority of se Section 76-6 of the Charter of the City of Cleveland and Section 329.02D of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances from a, a notice of violation number V24003721 issued on January 30th, 2024 by the Department of Building and Housing for failure to comply with section 343.01 of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances, which states that new or used motor vehicle sales on a vacant lot or building is, or in a building is not permitted in a local retail business district. And this was filed on February 23rd, 2024. With that, I will hand it over to Ms. Wilson for the oath. Uh, she meant Ms. Brown. <laughs> no problem. Good morning. I'm Member Brown, and I will uh, swear in those who are present for this case. 
Uh, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand, reply I do, state your name, and spell your name. Let's start with Mr. Jason Lewis. Sir, you're on mute. You need to unmute. Yes, how you doing? I am well. Please raise your hand, reply I do, state your name, and spell your name. I do, Jason Lewis, J-A-S-O-N-L-E-W-I-S. Thank you, sir. Anyone else to testify for this case? Uh, no, I wasn't aware that anyone else could. I'm not sure of that. Well, there may be some people from the city, sir. So thank okay. you. Okay. Anyone else? Maybe there is no one else. It appears not. If you're on the phone, hit star six to unmute yourself. We have not been virtual for a while, so some people may be unaware of that. All right. Uh, Mr. Lewis, we just need the address that you're, uh, you want on file for this. As um, far as I know, it's 1055 Ivanhoe Road. Okay. Great. Thank you, Ms. Brown. We'll move on to the history of the property. Madam Chair, I would just state that for these cases, we do not do history on these. Okay. Uh, and uh, who do we have doing legal today? Madam Chair, we were made aware that Mary would be out this morning, so I'd be happy to read it for you. That'd be great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the board, appellant is appealing violation number B2400372 issued by the Cleveland Department of Building and Housing. The standard of review is whether the administrative decision was illegal, arbitrary, capricious, unreasonable, or unsupported by the preponderance of substantial, reliable, and probative evidence. If the appellant fails to meet this burden, the administrative decision must be affirmed. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Lewis, uh, you received a violation notice for your use of this uh, property. Uh, do you want to tell us what's uh, going on? Um, I uh, had a used car business uh, since 2018, registered with the state, and I purchased a property. Uh, I purchased two parcels that was from, from an auction, and it said commercial, but it said vacant lot. I wasn't pretty sure of the land use, but I figured by it being a developed area that I will be able to, they said I needed one variance up to from local retail to retail or something like that. And uh, I'm just, I purchased the location to uh, continue providing a service to used cars, which is, uh, I've been doing since 2018 with Ohio, uh, with the state of Ohio. And uh, I purchased a place and uh, it's fenced in and the security cameras in this. Pretty up to date, but it is an issue with some cars from next door that was parked there when I got there in the back and the rear. I've been trying to get them to move though, but I'm just trying to uh, continue productive business. And they said that it was a variance down. I guess it was zoned maybe 30, 40 years ago or something, never been rezoned. And uh, I'm just trying to figure out from the, I, I received a violation and I'm just trying to um, go from there and see what I would need to do or, or so forth. So, as I understand it, you purchased these lots at auction. Were they uh, land bank lots? Is that what they were? One of them was from a personal um, a personal buyer, and then the other other two were from a land bank, which were sold as commercial vacant lots. And when I checked on my place, Cuyahoga, it said commercial, but they were used as part of vacant lot. I don't know for what, because there's no business where I've seen where they use that as a lot, maybe guess 40, 50 years ago across the street, maybe there was a company or something, maybe in the 1950s or 60s, but I haven't been able to find any history on it. So they've been deemed as a vacant commercial lot for parking, which there is no parking. I don't know. If... 
And when did you put the uh, office trailer on site? Well, the office trailer, I think that's been on there since the person I got from it was there. I think that had been on there since like 2015 or 16, as far as I know of, because I, I used to frequent the area before they repaved the street to uh, do the community development thing. And I've seen it there for years. And I got in contact with the owner because I purchased the adjacent to uh, maybe about almost three years ago. But I was able to get in contact with the owner, had the office trailer and not to uh, to complete everything so I can uh, like fence it in and be able to uh, run a productive business. So the office trailer was on site. When did you purchase these lots? Uh, I purchased two of them in August. It'll be three years. The uh, the two, then one the city owns, then I own the end one, which is 1055 where the office trailer is at. So it's four parcels. I own three of them. And the one, if everything works out, I will try to figure out the city what I need to do. Get that one because it's like an empty space in between, which you can't visually see, but it's a different parcel. So out of four parcels, I, I have three of them. And are you using the city parcel for your business? Do you have cars on it? No, it's like kind of in between. So it's just like a gap. You can't visually see it, but it's one, two, the cities, then it's mine. So it's like in between. So it's like a big lot, but one of the lots you can't visually see it. But far as parcel wise, the city had it and it went to an auction, but it went for like kind of high and I was waiting for it to come back up. So it's like, it's just like, if I have the corner, the city, then I have the two on the end from the house. I mean, know that driveway on back. So the house, the, the house that's to the left in this particular photo. Yes. So there's the house, the driveway, and then you own the lots to the right yes. of the driveway, all the way to the corner. It's skip it's skipping between somehow because this is a different parcel. I have the I think it's 142, 141, 142, 143 is the CDs and 144 is mine. So 143, it, it uh went through an auction, but it never made it to the land bank last year when I thought it would. So I have three out of four. They told me if everything checks out. As far as me being able to conduct business there, I can go to city and get it as associated parcel or something like that. So explain to us what the who what the vehicles are that are on the lots at this point in this particular photograph. Those are vehicles that I set up there for my other lot because I'm currently at 6623 St. Clair, but the owner is in the, I've been there six years, but the owner, he's passed away and it's in his will to sell it. And I don't have that capital to right now to purchase it. So it's up for sale. So that's why I got something else in the, and, and then it's a better area up there on Ivanhoe Road. It's, it's more traffic and it's, I know it's, uh, streets been redeveloped and so forth. So those are vehicles that I put up there for display. The vehicles so in the rear, those have been there for, I don't know how long. And since I own a property, I've been telling them to try to move them or tow them. I gave them notices and they keep, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. I've been trying to get them moved, but I would figure I could try to cover everything once I figure out what the zoning. And even if so, I still want them to move them. So I don't know if that would be a city issue or what, but I've literally put notices on their door and all that to get those removed there. They had a mechanic there, I guess, or somehow, and he never finishes them or whatever the case may be. But I think I've been going there off and on for a year and they, they haven't moved them yet. So I don't know. I want them to move them so I can fence it in and, and keep it secure because the area is usually a cut through area. And when I first got there, they were parking stone and kids and cars on there. But I've been able to establish that, you know, this is not the area for that and so forth. And I have 24 hour surveillance on, from the office trailer to see all the way around. So it, it made it a pretty safer, safer area too. Because it's like on the next street, I think. Someone got found in an abandoned building, like right on the next street by the Collinwood or a stadium or something, maybe like a week ago. So it just pretty much beef up the security of the air. And uh, I've been able to deal with a couple of people from the neighborhood as far as uh, vehicles and business and develop a relationship with the neighboring businesses and so forth. Ford, what questions do you have for Mr. Lewis? 
Uh, Madam Chair, this this is Liz. I I do have a point of clarification. Yes, please. So when these applicants come to our office at the counter, we let them know that this is a violation notice from an illegal use and that the board does not have the authority to grant a variance from this case, that the board would in fact just be reviewing whether or not the city did something illegal, arbitrary, or capricious in citing them. And uh, we do inform them that the process is to acquire a permit because obviously when the inspector went out, he found um, good evidence that there, that a used car lot has never been fully established here. Perhaps it is on one of the parcel, and I apologize that it's not in our process to generally do the, the research for this. We rely on the appellants to bring that information to us at the time of the hearing, but it's possible that at one time there was a permit for a portion but the inspector found good cause to cite the appellant. And um, as a, also a point of clarification, we do notify the inspectors and in, well in advance of these hearings and we send them the link the uh, week before as well. Thank you. Thank you. The city is closed today. Correct. That's correct, yes. That's probably why the inspector's not here. Probably. Uh, we send them the, the link to the meeting. Doesn't matter. He's off work today. Well, we are not all off work. <laughs> we are here. We are. Thought here. the city was closed. City I mean, I understand closed. we are here because you had a zoning hearing that was scheduled before city hall was closed. The question is, what is the duty of the inspectors? I I don't know that. Do you? Uh, that's a good point, Madam Chair. I, we were informed that we can take a day off or we can um, work on this day. So the appellant has been made aware. He's been given the the link. Um, I would assume that he would be able to log in through a phone, but you're right. He may not have the access to those things. We were not made aware of that, though, in advance. Okay. So uh, it, it appeared on uh, going on Google Maps that this had been used as a car lot previously. Uh, the trailer existed. Uh, the area, this particular parcel within the yellow block was paved and striped. So um, I think there was some precedent for it being used as a business there. Uh, board, um, what would you like to do at this point? We don't have any testimony from the city. Correct. <laughs> so, um, that's a, an issue in my mind. I would agree. Um, to me, I, I don't feel comfortable rendering a decision unless we have some testimony from the city. All right. So, uh, sounds like we are in agreement to postpone this. Okay. Correct. Oh. I'm in agreement. I'm, I'm in agreement. agreement. I apologize to the appellant because he made it here today, but. Right. Um, I, this, I, this, right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Mr. Lewis, uh, we are in agreement that it would be um, given the fact that there's no representative from the city here today, given the fact that city hall is closed uh, and uh, was uh, that that decision was made um, based on the events going on today. Uh, okay. So, I think in all fairness to you, we want to make sure that we can hear this case properly. So we're going to, um, uh, we'd like to postpone this to a future date. Are you, um, are you okay with that? Oh yeah, sure. I mean, whatever we, uh, whatever it takes to try to get it resolved. Okay, great. Ms. Kukla, can we get a new date for this gentleman, please? Sure, we are looking at May 13th or May 20th. Uh, let's take him to May 13th. 
Okay. So um, calendar number, oh, I'm sorry if there's no objection from the board members. No objection. I just have a comment after you do that. Okay. I was just an, gonna announce that calendar number 24-038 is postponed to May 13th. And if you received a letter at the last hearing, or sorry, at this hearing, <laughs> You will receive a letter again before the next hearing, 10 days before. Thank you. All right, thanks. Mr. Lewis, um, Madam Chair, my comment is this hearing is about a violation notice, not about getting a zoning variance. And so, sir, I think you have other uh, work or applications, actions to pursue in order to be able to operate your business here. It would be wise to do that. Okay. I I just want to echo what um, Ms. Brown said. I think you need to come down to City Hall and talk to the folks in building and housing and ask them how you actually get a variance for what you're trying to do. Okay. I'll check into that. I wasn't for sure. They just told me to to go through this process and so forth and then a next phase or something, but I wasn't aware that I was able to um, start getting a ball rolling in the other for the variance. Sooner is always better than later. Okay, sure. I'll 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 check into that as early as tomorrow. Thank you, sir. No problem. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on, Ms. Holster to 24-042. Sounds good. Our next case is calendar number 24-042. This is at 3210 Franklin Boulevard. TDG Franklin North LLC owner proposes to construct a three-story 29-unit apartment building in a B12 family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there are and with that, I will hand it over to Ms. Brown for the oath. Thank you. I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand, reply I do, uh, state your name and your address, and also spell your name. Okay, my name is Wesley Harper, Fort and Harper Architects. I do. Um, address 812 Huron Road East, Suite 301, Cleveland, Ohio, 44115. And my name is spelled W-E-S-T-L-E-I-G-H, Harper, H-A-R-P-E-R. -E Thank you. Thank you. Next. James Simmons. TDG Franklin, uh, James J A M J A M E S, Asimus A S I M E S, uh, 6055 Rockside Woods Boulevard North, Suite 100, Cleveland, Ohio, 44131. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Carol Vang, um, Carol C A R O L, Vang V. Like Victor, A N G, uh, 3099 Vine Court, uh, Cleveland, 44113. Um, oh. Jeff Maycar, 3119 Clinton Avenue, and I own the adjacent rental property at 1535 West 32nd, right next to the TDG project. And spell your last name, sir. Makar, M A K A R. First name is Jeff. Thank you. Uh, Zachary Busher, uh, last name B is in boy, U E S C H E R. Uh, and I own 3014 Franklin Boulevard directly east of the uh, uh, proposed plan. Dave Keener, D A V E, 3014. K U E H N E R. I own 3107 Vine Court, which is the property to the north of the development. 
Thank you. Anyone else for this case? All right, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Brown. <clears throat> Excuse me, could we have the history of the property, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. There are several addresses in this project area. The addresses range between 3104 through 3118 Franklin and also 1551 through 1553 West 32nd Street. Originally, the properties were zoned multifamily in 1929. They were changed to two family in 1985. They're also in historic landmark dist overlay district. The project area is made up at this time. It's made up of one parcel. Um, on the Sanborn maps, we found that in 1913, a church occupied the site known as the Franklin Avenue ME Church. For the addresses of 3102 through 3108, the Sanborn maps show duplexes on two parcels for those addresses. Um, the duplexes were demolished in 1937. Um, there was a structure on 31 through 3108 through 3110 that was demolished in 1937. The Franklin Avenue ME Church Tower was demolished in 1910. 1947, the Franklin Avenue Church was demolished. Um, there are several variances on Biomatter Chair in uh, calendar 52-238, and that would be in 1952. A variance was granted to establish parking a parking lot accessory to the YMCA across the street. In calendar number 83-348, a variance was granted to erect a chain link fence to secure the parking area. Um, and so we have one other calendar, actually a few other calendars, um, calendar numbers 1589 through 1596, and that's approximately, I believe, um, well, that was 10 variance cases. Um, 15 townhouses, though, were proposed for this project area, and they were denied, and that, again, is in 2015. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. All right. And uh, are you reading legal as well? Yes, I will. Unless we have somebody here from the city that I didn't see log in. Okay. Right. They may be off thank today you, as well. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, members of the board. The appellant request is requesting a use variance and area variance from the side street setback and maximum gross floor area and parking requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the variance, the appellant to the appellant must prove that denying the request will result in an unnecessary hardship, particular to the property, such that there will be no economically feasible use of the property without the variance. Will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. To obtain the area variance, the appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or, or buildings in the same use district will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intents of the zoning code. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Harper, will you be the spokesperson today? I will, yes. All right. <clears throat> uh, if you'd like to go ahead and address the variances you're seeking. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, so, uh, as you're probably aware, the uh, location of the project is at the intersection of West 32nd and Franklin Boulevard in Ohio City. Um, the current lot is vacant. Um, we're surrounded by a variety of uh, contextual residential uses. Um, to the east, we have, if we could go back to the uh, existing site view yeah one more one more please thank you um but here we're looking at the current state of the lot uh, it's a mix of uh, some overgrown vegetation uh deteriorating uh, parking lot for the most part uh, to the east we have uh, a uh, multi-unit residential uh, home uh, same thing to the north of us uh, that you can see kind of to the left uh, in the view here uh, next slide, please. Uh, 
Uh, here's a better view of that existing home to the east, uh, which we currently share uh, an access easement with. Next. Uh, here's the context to the north of us. You can see the multi-unit residential home uh, facing West 32nd, uh, surrounded on two sides. Uh, to the east, you see uh, four-story townhomes uh, there to the right. Uh, and then to the left of the existing home, you can see uh, the western units of a cluster uh, of townhomes that face Vine Court, which are also four stories. Next. Um, here we have uh, the view or, of the proposed structure facing Franklin Boulevard. It's a mix of brick, cement board siding, and some metal panels. For each unit facing Franklin Boulevard, we have porches on the first floor units, and then balconies for each unit facing south. This project uh, has Kind of changed a bit from the beginning. We've been through the neighborhood process. We uh, have been approved uh, for final approval from uh, the OCI or Ohio City Landmarks as well as uh, City Landmarks. So uh, along the way, we've responded to a lot of their commentary to make sure that this uh, or that everybody's comfortable with the project. Next, please. Here is a view uh, somewhat similar to the one of the views we looked at. Uh, earlier here, this is looking from the southeast corner of Franklin and 32nd. So you can see we have uh, a good amount of vegetation and landscaping buffering the, the building against Franklin Boulevard. Uh, in this case, or in this view, you can see also that we are three stories where the YMCA structure to our west uh, is a bit taller. Um, next. Here's a view of the West 32nd facade. Next. Uh, another view of the West 32nd facade where you can see the entry to the parking structure or parking lot uh, behind the building. Um, this facade was a portion of the building where we went through a lot of different versions to, to get the neighborhood uh, landmark groups comfortable with the project. And this is also the side where we are asking for a two and a half foot variance relative to the required five foot. And we think everybody in these uh, commissions have been comfortable with that variance. Uh, we've actually pushed it back uh, from zero feet to the two and a half feet so we can get a bit of landscaping along the sidewalk. And the two and a half feet is somewhat misleading. Um, at the eastern, or I'm sorry, the uh, Part of the building to the right here, the building is at two and a half feet, but then the property line kind of splays a bit to make that setback larger as the building marches north. So just so you're aware of that. Next view, please. So here we have the more technical document that we submitted to the city uh, for the zoning review. Next. Here we have a site plan for the project. You can see uh, what I was just talking about for the two and a half foot uh, setback. If you look at the bottom left of the building, we have it called out as two and a half feet, but then you can see the property line kind of splays out as it heads north. So that setback gets larger as it continue. Um, the pad mounted transformer that we have at the northwest corner of the lot could likely it will likely be five feet from the property line, but just to to make sure that you know there aren't any surprises as we get more into the technical documents here, we did uh, have the reviewer note that the transformer may possibly be in that five foot setback. But essentially, what that area would be at the northwest corner is an area of uh, significant vegetation to screen the parking lot, and that would be uh, put together per the zoning code. Uh, for screening parking in a residential district. Um, you can see uh, the footprint of the structure uh, takes up uh, a good portion of the southern portion of the, the property. We have a 10 foot setback relative to Franklin, which meets the mapped setback defined by the Planning Commission uh, over the years. We then have a six foot setback, which is one foot larger than the requirement along the eastern uh, property line. 
There we share uh, an easement with the neighbor to the east where they have access for six feet of our property and then we maintain access on six feet of their property. Um, towards the rear, we have a five foot setback at that northeast corner of the building. Um, and you can see the rundown of uh, square footages and surface parking spaces um, that we have here. Now, right now we're showing 20 parking spaces on site. The developer of this site is also the developer of the site across Franklin to the south, which is ongoing. And they have uh, additional parking spaces above and beyond the required zoning. Uh, number required. So we have an agreement in place. Should there be more demand than 20 parking spaces uh, on this property, we are legally able to have people park um, on that southern part or on that southern development site. So uh, I, I think that probably eases some concerns about parking um, for the total of this project. In regards to some of the other issues, um, obviously a townhome development was denied here in the past. Uh, we've had quite a bit of support for this project um, for apartments. You know, we have the YMCA structure directly to the west of us that received many of these same variances in the past so that it could be switched to residential. And I believe there's dozens of units in that structure. So there is precedent for these kinds of uh, variances. And I, I know you look at each project individually, but I just wanted to give the, uh, the flavor of uh, past variances in this area. Um, as I mentioned, we went through the, the city landmarks process, we felt that they were very comfortable with um, the design, and then they were supportive of uh, whatever variances would uh, come about. So uh, I can't recall if there's any additional uh, slides in this. Uh, maybe we could flip through those quickly. Yeah, you can see the floor plans. We have units facing Franklin Boulevard. Uh, so we're going to have a, a very, uh, I think, a large presence from a pedestrian perspective where there could be people out front using their porches and, and really getting eyes on the street to, to elevate the, the safety of this area. Right now, again, it's a vacant property where um, you know, anything can happen with this new structure you can obviously add additional apartment units into an area that does need them. There are studies that show that, um, and obviously eliminate a bit of an eyesore. So, uh, here you have the elevations for the project. We aren't asking for any sort of height variance. We're, we're meeting the setback requirements, uh, for that height. So with that, um, James, I don't know if you have any other additional comments, but uh, I'd open it up for questions or, or concerns. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nope. Harper, if, if we could go back to the parking plan view, um, I believe I, I noted in your plans you had bicycle parking, uh, but I'm also wondering about your ADA parking. Yes, Madam Chair. So uh, you can see at the say the, the southeastern corner of the parking lot. It's labeled HC. Uh, and then right. to the right of that, we have uh, what's essentially the van accessibility area. So this, this fully meets the ADA requirements for 20 parking spaces. <clears throat> and what is the adjacency to public transit for this particular building? Yes, we are, of course, at Franklin Boulevard and to our north is Detroit Avenue, which, um, you know, is less than a quarter mile. So this does fall into the newer zoning overlay, I guess you could say. Uh, however, we are you know, trying to move this project forward at a, a pace that didn't allow us to wait for that portion of the zoning code change to, to come into play. So. Where we're essentially under the older zoning uh, review for parking. However, it sounds like um, you know you're kind of putting it together that you know, if we were to submit this today for a zoning review, we likely wouldn't have any parking here. Exactly right. 
And the Y building is directly west across the street then, correct? To the west, that's correct, across okay. 32nd Street. All right. Did you okay. have a community meeting besides the uh, Detroit, uh, <coughs> besides the uh, local landmarks and design review? We did. We met with the Block Club back in December, I believe. Um, it was, uh, I thought, generally uh, well received. It did not pass the vote uh, for support for the Block Club, but uh, we did present to them. And, uh, you know, again, we did go through the, uh, the larger uh, review process on the neighborhood. We, we also presented at a community meeting for um, Ohio City Incorporated. Uh, I believe it was either late November or early December uh, on this project as well. Um, Madam Chair, I just have a follow up question on that point. Yes. Um, so I, uh, Mr. Harper, I um, know I get the emails from that block club because I'm in the area. Um, and I know this project changed significantly over time. Um, was that a, in result of feedback that you received from, from the community? And if so, can you kind of high level go through um, the changes that were requested and what you did? Because I know it's very different than what was originally proposed. Yes, that's correct. So uh, a big part of the community feedback was uh, related to the facade of the West 32nd side of the building. Uh, previously, it was you know, for better or worse, treated as more of a secondary facade. And some of the, the comments we got from the neighborhood level, as well as Ohio City and Landmarks, was that they'd like to see that facade treated in a more primary uh, facade manner. So we went back, um, added some additional glazing. We made the doorway to the, uh, to the space off of West 32nd that you can see here in the middle, that would now have uh, maybe a more pedestrian friendly glass door with a transom above. It would be lit at night uh, to, to again, kind of accentuate this facade. We also expanded the amount of brick on this facade to treat it in a way that's similar to the way the, the masonry piers are treated along the Franklin facade. So it feels as though you know, the Franklin design is wrapping around it. And um, uh, obviously those, uh, those groups were comfortable with that. I think on the neighborhood level, um, you know, sometimes that's a harder lift and there's some folks that don't wanna see anything happen here. So um, in some ways there was no way to, to come to a negotiation uh, on that front, but, um, you know, obviously we, we met the criteria that some of the larger groups had. Uh, and I, I think maybe some of the pushback on the block club level was for the power parking count. Uh, and, and since then we have, uh, not that it was a difficult sell, but we, we've gotten uh, legal documentation that we would be able to, to use the parking of the development to the south. So uh, with all of that said, I, I believe we, approached um, a lot of the commentary from the name of Block Club. Thank you so much. And this is this side of the building is where the variance is, correct? The setback variance. That's correct. Yes. And with respect to the parking, you've already testified that the law has since changed. And were you to submit under the new law, you wouldn't need a parking variance at all um, because you're so close. To, you're two blocks away from the 22, the 26, et cetera, bus lines. Um, so thank you for walking through those changes. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And my final question will be just with respect to the hardship, if you could um, identify and articulate the hardship that your client will uh, face if these variances are not granted. Yeah, I, I think, um... Maybe James, I don't know if you would yeah. have a, a more concise answer on this. Thank you. Um, in particular, on the uh, on the lot coverage on this as well, 
this is uh, the parcels with this project are, are the only parcels with that level of uh, coverage restriction um, in this block here, um, providing some additional hardship and, and impracticality of, of developing to the, um, the coverage allowed under its current zoning. Um, in general, the, uh, the zoning in place on this is, was, was done in a way to intentionally restrict development on it um, in a practical way and um, more stringent even than the neighboring parcels immediately around it. Um, so that's, that's where the hardship on our end would be um, making it impractical to develop on this because of the restrictions on uh, capacity that this would be able to hold by its current zoning. If I could maybe add a bit to that. Um, mm -hmm. When the zoning was changed from multifamily to two family uh, back in the 80s, it's my understanding from doing a lot of work in this area that that was executed to eliminate large mansions on Franklin Boulevard from turning into basically boarding houses. Uh, where individual rooms in these larger houses could be rented out uh, in a manner that uh, created what people thought was overcrowding uh, back in that time period. So this is kind of a remnant of that zoning perspective. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I think that's obviously to the law, this is a two family location. Um, but I, I think that the Ohio City Landmark Commission as well as the city uh, understands that this is a, a completely different type of project than what the current zoning is kind of protecting in the neighborhood. And it's a, so the zoning is two family, you're surrounded by multifamily projects. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, I'm essentially uh, all sides including across uh, Franklin Boulevard, which will be, you know, uh, dozens of apartments. We have dozens of condos in the YMCA building. We have the four unit town home project to the north of us. Uh, and then uh, I'm not exactly sure how many units are in the existing more uh, home looking structures to the north and east, but uh, those are at the very least two family. And there's also the multifamily building um, caddy corner across the street for senior housing. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that concludes your testimony from your all members of the design team, correct? That's correct. All right, we'll move on to the neighbors. Um, and I believe uh, we had uh, correspondence, did we not, Ms. Kukla, from, uh, Ms. Vang? Yes, I did send you a letter from Ms. Vang. Okay. Uh, Ms. Vang, would you like to give your testimony now, please? Uh, yes, thank you very much for hearing me today. Um, I live at, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. I live at uh, 3099 Vine Court. Um, my, my property is adjacent to this proposed apartment project. Um, let's see if I can get my directions right. Uh, uh, excuse me one second. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Bay, could you give us maybe an aerial view or something so oh, we can thank you. get a perspective on where her property is related to this? Right, thank you. Does that help you, Ms. Fang? Yes, um, let's see. I think my property is um, to the northeast. Thank you to the northeast of the project. And um, I have uh, attended the block club meeting in December. And I also arranged uh, an in person meeting um, with the developer. And I believe the construction manager came, Joe. And um, uh, several of us uh, met and discussed the project um, together. However, uh, at this meeting, uh, a resolution was uh, to our concerns was not 
you know, um, we didn't achieve a, a satisfactory resolution. Um, so my, um, my personal concern uh, specific to my, my property is that there's a large silver maple tree on the adjacent uh, property line. It's on my property line, but it's right up against the retaining wall that's being proposed. And it is, um, let's see, just north of the five foot setback. So the construction will um, affect the roots of the tree and the retaining wall, uh, even though it's shallow, it will still uh, affect the roots of the tree as well. Um, and I met with um, personal tree care representative certified arborist, uh, Justin Jarek. And Justin was kind enough to share his report with me and allow me to um, share some of a few comments from the report with you uh, this morning. Um, he, he states the proposed building construction will unavoidably, well, un unavoidably threatens to disrupt the tree's delicate root system. Um, the tree will uh, depend heavily on its roots for stability and et cetera. Um, uh, my husband and I are concerned that the tree will begin to lean towards our building and before too long at all will damage our building. Um, and Justin includes uh, that the height of the building construction will necessitate trimming the tree and this will remove he predicts 75 percent of the tree's canopy which is the branches it's really spread out and and um, this will cause the tree's appearance not to look good but um the main thing is um according to justin it will affect the tree's ability to absorb nutrients and it will begin to fail um so uh, this is also from Justin's report. Um, the, there will be heightened risk from the disruption of the root system and the canopy branches of the tree. This will cause the tree to um, have a higher risk of falling onto nearby structures. And that's where my husband and I are so concerned. So, uh, and I love this quote that Justin put in here. I appreciate so much you allowing me to share this. With deep consideration for the tree's significance, welfare, and the safety of residents, we recommend to proceed with a thoughtful removal of the tree before construction begins. Um, we also discussed how difficult it will be to get in to where the tree is after the apartments are constructed. Um, and then this is, you know, something I love that he wrote. Uh, this recommendation is made with empathy and mindfulness toward all stakeholders involved, embracing the importance of fostering harmony between human activities and the environment while ensuring the safety and well being of the residents. Um, I did this, I, I did share this report with uh, the Dallas group representatives, and I also, we've had some conversations about it. Um, I asked what their arborist recommends as well, but we just haven't come up with a, a satisfactory resolution uh, to the um, the damage that will the, be caused to the tree. Um, I also was concerned about the, um, the um, hardship that, uh, that the hardship, you know, that the Dalla group will experience if they don't have the, these variances granted. Um, I know, though, that this the spirit of the zoning, the spirit of the zoning codes is to protect uh, existing um, property owners, and I I'm concerned about the harm that will that will occur to uh, the adjacent property members and to the community by the project as it is proposed today. So my request is to not grant the variances today so that the adjacent neighbors in the community have more time to uh, come up with a satisfactory resolution. So thank you for hearing me. And I think uh, we have some more. Yeah, um, my name is Jeff Maker. I only- uh, One, I'm sorry, just one moment, Jeff. Um, we're gonna get to you, but uh, you keep, 
mentioning a satisfactory resolution and that the the arborist that you consulted with recommended the removal of the tree. Is that the satisfactory resolution you're seeking? Yes, I would like for the Dallas group to um, to cover removing the tree. That is my request. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. I'm sorry about that. Okay, um, all right. Uh, so, uh, Jeff, is it Macar, right? Macar, yep. Macar, go ahead with your statement. Yeah, my my one of the concerns that I had was, you know, one is I didn't even know what was going on here for the last year and a half. I unfortunately was never in, um, brought up to speed until like February, I think it was. And um, I was the original developer of the townhomes uh, north of the property there. You can see the townhome project in front of the other units. And one of the things I worked out with the other developers was a non perpetual easement access to allow them to build the four units directly behind their project. And, you know, just worked with the other developers to make it, you know, feasible and acceptable for me to access my rental property and the tenants to park. One of my concerns is that their fence is directly on the property line. And I talked to James and Joe, and I also even talked to Joe um, a lot. Balag, is it how, how's, how's it pronounced, James? Balog. Balog, yeah. Talked to Joe this week about it or last week about it. And, you know, he expressed that, you know, these seem like pretty easy, easy requests to resolve. So my, my biggest concern was just moving the fence and not having it directly on the property line, even if it's a foot or less, just to give me some room to open up doors. If they put the fence where it's at today, um, and I was the one that erected that fence when the YMCA had the original poles in there. So I just put that up as a temporary fence. But ultimately, I, I needed to be set back a little bit. Hopefully, it can still, you know, you can still get your parking spots in there. But that was something that was not, you know, I have not heard back from the Dallas group. So, you know, until this issue is addressed and we come together with a right reasonable solution, you know, I would, you know, I'd vote no as well. So moving the fence a bit, how much is a bit for you? Um, I think a foot or so off the property line should be enough to open up doors. Where it's at right now, you can barely get open the doors if you park there. And again, I'm I'm looking at the northwest corner where the the um, what are you putting there? The transformer unit. Um, another thing I would, I would ask James is why wouldn't the transformer unit put in the back right corner here where there's plenty of space for that versus right right on the street? Is that something the city requires it to be close to the street for action? property? Uh, Gentlemen, so we're line. not, we, no. we don't just have a back and forth conversation here. I'm sorry. Okay. This should have happened before you came before us. And I'm sorry okay. that you didn't have that opportunity. And you absolutely need to go through the chair before you speak. So go ahead and respond. Me or James? James, go ahead. <laughs> uh, the, the comment on plenty of space, uh, the the property line does jog. Uh, Carol's property is, uh, I believe that's Carol's property there uh, towards the back. So the reason you see the building extend further east uh, behind the building is where Carol's property is. So that is not ours in which we have to put the transformer. So really the only place for the transformer was that northwest corner. Okay. Is there feasibility to move the fence as he requested? Uh, I believe we have some feasibility to to adjust the fence there. Um, based on our last meeting with with the neighbors on this, the the bigger item that that Jeff had brought up um, that we had been looking to to solve for is a concern on a retaining wall uh, on the property line. So um, previously, because of the topography of this site, um, we had a need for a retaining wall on the uh, or at least close to the property line there along the north and a little bit on the uh, northeast property line there, uh, just because again of elevations of where the ground is now and then feasibility of getting vehicles back there from 32nd. Um, we went back and, and tried to hone in our engineering to um, reduce a retaining wall as much as possible to satisfy some of the concerns that the neighbors had raised on that. And so we were able to get it so that the retaining wall we had initially expected to to need to be there, which is a couple feet in height, um, give or take, depending on the exact location, is is now next to non-existent. Um, we shifted the retention uh, of any kind of earthwork and the elevation change closer to the building to make for an easier transition between the two properties uh, or the multiple properties back there, our neighbors to the north and the northeast. So the the part we've been uh, trying to solve for um, some of the feedback from the neighbors on this was. 
um, again, in, in the spirit of giving some additional room for uh, Jeff's uh, uh, property uh, driveway there to the north. And um, again, in response to Carol's comments um, with the, the tree to the uh, northeast of the property to reduce some of the, we'll call it subsurface um, disturbance by having to put a retaining wall versus just having a uh, standard uh, parking lot depth type excavation. Yeah. Madam Chair, if I could uh, yes, please. add more comment. Um, I, I do think uh, being so familiar with the, uh, the technical documents here, getting that one foot that uh, Mr. Maycar is, is looking for, I, I don't believe that would be a problem. So I, I feel like that's something we could certainly uh, Great, doable. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, uh, what's our situation with the tree then? Are you amenable to removing the tree for the neighbor? If uh, the tree's damaged beyond its uh, ability to um, survive or it's a, a risk of falling over um, due to our construction, um, then we're open to removing the tree. Great. Thank you for that. And just for clarification, the tree is on uh, Ms. Fang's property, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Well, I think she testified it's 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 basically on her property, but at the property line. Yes. Do you have a uh, a map that you submitted that shows that, or is that not indicated on the? Is it on uh, your topo or something? It is not, but it's essentially. Uh, if you see, yeah, you're where the, the hand is right now, you see the, the 37.3 foot directly to the left uh, along the property line. Right. If it's, it's probably halfway between that note and the property line as it heads to the east. Okay. So it's essentially at the end of the parking lot. If you just drove straight forward, you'd, you'd run into the tree. Um, so it, uh, it is close to the property line, but uh, as, James, as James said, we've eliminated the retaining wall at or along the property lines, uh, and would of course work with the neighbor if it's damaged beyond uh, saving during construction. Excuse me, Madam Chair. This is uh, Xavier Bay from City Planning. <laughs> yes, Mr. Bay. I'd just like to uh, just leave a quick note that uh, you know if if it is in consideration to. I do anything with the tree that um, that the uh, you know necessary parties are reached within urban forestry with the city, uh, just to make sure that uh, you know proper protocol is, is taken care of. Thank you. And I'll just note as well. I mean, to the appellant and the developer. I mean, your t intention is to not damage the tree, correct? I mean, and to keep sure. it. I, I understand. I understand the safety concerns that that Carol has on this, and so if it becomes a, a safety issue because of our construction, we're uh, we're open to taking the tree out. Um, and you'll and you'll work with the city to make sure that an arborist makes that decision. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Fang has her hand up. Go ahead. Yes, um, I would like to uh, point out and repeat that. Um, Justin, the arborist that I spoke with, said that it, it will be much easier and more economical to remove the tree before construction begins because this is going to surround where this tree is and the equipment is not going to be able to get in. And so the cost of removing the tree is going to go up exponentially when this project is completed. Um, and he's also given a, a very reasonable estimate to do it so okay uh all right i believe we have uh uh two other neighbors that need to we need to hear from yeah um my name is zach and i own the property again directly east um 3014 franklin boulevard um, and, you know, I guess my major concern is obviously regarding the driveway. Um, you know, I'd like to request a non perpetual easement 
uh, for my driveway. Um, you know, I just think in regards to parking, you know, right now there's a driveway that you can kind of see on the property line uh, that hugs my house, you know, directly west of my house. And, you know, my concern is parking for my tenants, right? I think, you know, if, uh, if the property line or the, you know, apartments or the buildings are built, you know, too far up, like on the driveway, I'm not going to be able to have anyone, you know, parking there. They're not going to uh, be able to use my driveway, uh, which will obviously, you know, decrease the value of my home significantly without any parking spots. Um, and then, you know, again, I haven't necessarily had the chance to talk to uh, the Daly group about like building a new uh, driveway. Like it, right now it's brick, um, you know, Potentially, you know, we could put a brand new driveway there uh, where it would benefit, you know, both parties. Uh, then we would have to talk drainage, you know, in the back of the driveway. So the driveway uh, kind of slants down from Franklin Boulevard. Um, so drainage would then become a concern if we were to go that route. But um, that's my main concern is, is just the driveway. And again, I'd like to request a non perpetual easement, uh, which you know, Jeff actually requested, it looks like, on, on the very, Jeff, if you want to touch in. Yeah, I am. Um... Madam Chair, may well, I ask one a moment. question, please? Sure. Ms. Brown, go ahead. Um, to the two gentlemen who are, one who gave testimony and the other who is about to, when you say you've not had an opportunity to speak to the Dalit Group Development yep. Entity, can you please tell me why you've not had that opportunity? Yeah, I mean, I've reached out via email um, and, and made some phone calls and just haven't had the chance to talk directly to them about my specific problem. Um, you know, I know that there's been uh, uh, like meetings. Um, there was a neighborhood meeting, which I unfortunately was traveling for work and I couldn't attend the one, um, I think it was the Ohio City Block Club meeting um, that they had met with um i was unfortunately again just traveling for work during that specific meeting yeah so. Ma madam chair i don't think the zoning hearing is the place for everybody to reach their individual agreement about each item of concern correct i i second that these are personal these are property issues between property owners um that you need to figure out on your own um this isn't a it's not a BZA issue. These are, you know, easements and mm -hmm. um, issues of that nature are resolved between two property owners. Um, so um, I, I'm going to interrupt you, Miss Roca. I'm, I'd ahead. like to thank you and Miss Brown for that because I've been sitting here shaking my head. Uh, this is a public meeting, but the nature of the questions right now are of personal. And um, the question is, why were they not addressed with the property owner, developer, and the adjoining neighbors? Um, so it seems to me, uh, Ms. Brown, Ms. Roca, uh, is this a situation where it's not fully cooked and we need to have these folks back after they meet? I, I don't know that the appellant needs to wait to have their variances heard on personal property issues. I mean, these are things that can happen at the same time. Um, it has nothing to do with the variance. Well, Ms. we Brown? don't know that the rest don't. I mean, it, because we haven't heard them all. And and it, it just, I honestly don't know how to evaluate it. I don't know whether the developer wasn't available or whether the uh, folks coming in to testify waited until now. I mean, I don't have a, enough information to speak to that, but I don't believe this is the right setting for this discussion is really my comment. Yes, it's not. Board, what would you like to do? I, I I mean think I think we need to hear from everybody um who's present, but um I think that we proceed. I, I don't see to my knowledge, there's not a variance needed on that side of the um property. Um and to me, these are the developers here and hearing the neighbors 
that they want to resolve this personal property issue, but um, the, it, they don't have to grant an easement. I mean, these are rights and issues that are outside of the BZA purview. Um, and th it could be that the developer isn't going to grant an easement. That's not our issue. Right. Mm -hmm. That is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just going to chime in, Madam Chair, that it sounds like um, I would also be curious if there are any other things that are related to the variants or variances that should need to be discussed at the table. But I would agree that for these types of issues, helpful to know that the conversation has not happened, but I don't think that the, deb the debate, the back and forth needs to happen at the table with us. Okay. Like that you. just needs to be resolved separately. Okay. Uh, all right. We still have testimony from uh, 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 Dave, and I see that Mr. Harper has his hand up. So we'll go to Mr. Harper. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to make sure everybody's clear. We have had uh, a half a dozen community meetings for this project. Um, Mr. Simis has made himself available uh, to Ms. Vang uh, on multiple occasions. Um, so uh, we have been uh, open to hearing what the neighbors have to say. Um, we've spent a lot of time in community meetings for this project. We spent a lot of time designing to respond to those uh, requests. And uh, with that, uh, I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, we have one more neighbor, uh, Dave, if you'd like to make your statement. Yes, uh, Dave Keener, 3107 Vine Court. Uh, I have three issues, two of which have been debated extensively here with respect to the proximity of the construction and the tree, as well as the uh, proximity of the fence to the, the buildings to the north and Mr. Makar's issue. Uh, the, the other issue I'll bring up is the parking. Uh, I understand that there's a my main concern with the parking is the overflow that will end up on 32nd Street, more than likely. Uh, and I wanted the board to be aware of there are very limited our transportation issues with respect to traffic coming down by court already on the 29th Street, which is extensively uh, heavily populated with parking. Larger vehicles can't make that turn. I've seen emergency vehicles only able to enter from the 32nd Street down Vine Court, both fire trucks and ambulances, because uh, they can't make the turn on the, on the east side. And I'm concerned that if the parking is even more concentrated on 32nd, that that same safety issue will be carried to the 32nd side. I've even seen large, uh, large trucks back down Vine Court because they can't make the turn uh into vine court which is a one way from the east because of the all the concentrated parking on the on that street i'm just fearful of that same situation being exasperated on 32nd and that's that's the concern that's the other concern i wanted to make sure that the board was aware of relative to the variance being requested on parking thank you sir um I'm just looking in the packet. Is there, uh, did you, you have uh, testified uh, and made statement a couple of times about the fact that the, uh, the building across the street will be adequate for any overflow parking. Do we have anything in the file that states that? Uh, that is to Mr. Harper or to the appellant. I'm sorry, Madam Chair, can you repeat the question? Uh, the question was, you've mentioned a couple of times that you're going to have parking uh, available across the street at yes. the other building. Do we have anything in the packet of information we received from you that uh, states that? I, I don't believe Mr. Simis has sent that to the Board of Zoning Appeals yet. Uh, but once that is, uh, James, uh, I'm assuming the number of parking spaces that we can get is nine, which would then allow us to meet the, the zoning code, which would eliminate the, the need for that variance altogether. And we could essentially eliminate that from the request today. Correct. It, it uh, combined between the two projects, it would exceed the parking requirements by code. Right. 
Um, I know we have the new code and you you're really operating under the old code, but uh, if you could supply that to add to your packet of information, I think that would be appreciated. Madam Chair, I just have a question about that. I know uh, the Dallas group is working on the project. I probably mispronounced that daylit or however you say it. Um, project across the street, which is also, I believe, an apartment building. Um, and there's that empty lot that's for parking. Did you receive variances for that project for parking as well? That's a good question. That one, it's not. Um, we are over parked by code for that one. There's um, a, I think it's a 10 space excess on that project for what it would be required by code um, on that. And so that's. Okay. Just, just make sure you reconcile that because, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you right. don't have enough parking on that project and then you're saying you can park cars over there, then we have a disconnect. Uh, Adding the two projects together uh, and combining the amount of parking between the two would exceed the number of apartments uh, that are combined in the two projects and they're residential only projects so there's not um, some ancillary um, additional demand on parking um, that would be required there okay thank you okay anything else board i mean we just have some commentary going on uh madam chair from miss leonard in the chat that i'm trying to follow but not sure i understand miss leonard would you like to make a statement good morning madam chair happy eclipse monday thank uh, you yes so the any types of so this has been landmarks approved um, the site plan, the exterior facade, everything about the project has been approved through landmarks. Generally, when there's any type of exterior modifications or site plan changes, it's going to require a trip back to landmarks. Now, for a fence moving at 12 inches, it's likely that they could just do an administrative review, but that's really a landmarks process um, on making that determination of whether that's it's necessary to take it through the full commission or whether they just do an administrative review on that. So I just want to put that out there that uh, that this has been through the those processes and everything that's on the site plan and then the exterior um, attributes have all been um, approved under landmarks permission previously. So I just want to have let you all have that information. Thank you, Ms. Leonard. Excellent point. All right, anything else, board? Ms. Roca, are you uh, crafting the motion on this one? I can yeah. craft the motion. Excuse um, me, Madam Chair, this is uh, Xavier Bay from City Planning. Yes, Xavier Bay from City Planning. Would you like to uh, make a statement? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, just, just make a few final comments, um, uh, mainly speaking towards the variances being requested. I uh, just wanted to also let you know the City Planning uh, uh, request, um, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> City Planning, um, you know, it, it agrees with um, the, these variances being requested. Uh, the there, as we already heard, extensive testimony about the parking. We don't see that as being a big issue. Um, the maximum gross floor area is is a very typical variance that we see come across mainly because um, you know for for really traditional um, development, it's difficult to meet um, old code standards as far as the maximum area requirement stands. So we don't see an issue with the area variance. Um, and, you know, similarly with the uh, 5 foot side street setback as this, uh, parcel line kind of shape, you know, uh, skews, um, as you go down back into the depth of the property, um, it, we see a lot of room, you know, with these side yard that they're, um, providing for the rest of the project, uh, you know, uh, aside from that small corner. Um, I, I was glad to hear about the screening for the, um, transformer. That's definitely. Great to hear. And lastly, for the um, uh, the context around this corner, uh, th th this project surrounded by multiple uh, multifamily, uh, pro uh, you know, context currently. So we see it fitting uh, what's already you know around here in this area. Um, the last note for the tree, 
we typically, uh, you know, would like to see more uh, tree canopy throughout Cleveland. Um, but if, if it does come down to the tree needing to be removed, we definitely just want to mention again that you uh, make contact with Urban Forestry and Jennifer Kipp because there could be a possibility to really save that tree. Thank you, Mr. Bay. Yeah, we, we generally speaking are averse to seeing trees come down. Uh, the testimony from the neighbor as to what the arborist said, said there would be extensive trimming, uh, which uh, my, I would anticipate that meaning that they would lollipop the tree, um, which uh, is uh, kind of severe on the tree. But um, I think the point to go through urban forestry is a good one. Um, Ms. Kukla, I believe that we also have a letter from Councilman. Yes, we did receive an email from the Councilman stating that he supports the variance. All right, great. Thank you. I just want to make sure we get that in. Anything else, board, before we move forward? Thank you, Mr. Bay. Thank you, Ms. Leonard. Hearing no further questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair, uh, I move that we approve calendar number 24-042 based on the extensive testimony that we have heard today um, on all the variances. Could I have a second, please? Board member Holzer, I second. Thank you, Ms. Holzer. Ms. Kukla, if you'd call the vote. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Holzer? Yes. Ms. Roca? Yes. Ms. Baith? Yes. Under number 24-042 is granted. It'll be ratified when we meet again on April 29th. We will send the appellant a letter but they can contact us on uh, April 30th for further instruction. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to the uh, Mr. Harper and the appellant, uh, um, given the situation and the testimony we've heard today, um, uh, please try and work with your neighbors and be good neighbors and um, be uh, receptive uh, to their requests for the situation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're gonna move on. Calendar number 24-020. Sounds good. Our next case is calendar number 24-020. This is at 660 East 185th Street. Three Black Knights LLC owner proposes to establish tattooing use. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record, of which there are three. This case was dismissed on March 4th due to the appellant's unexplained absence. Appellant contacted um, the planning department office and explained that the absence was due to a miscommunication. So the case has been reinstated from March 4th. Um, and with that, I will hand it over to Ms. Brown for the oath. Thank you. I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand, reply I do, state your name, your address, and spell your name. Thank you. Yes, I do. My name is Anthony Howard, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y. Last name H O W A R D. And the address, please. Oh, sorry. 660 East 185th Street, Euclid, Ohio 44119. Thank you, Mr. Howard. Are you uh, representing the owner or the uh, tenant? I am the tenant looking for the uh, permit for the use of doing tattoos. Thank you. Anyone else here uh, for this case? No, just me. And 
Um, well, Madam Secretary will ask you questions about authorization from the owner. Madam Chair and Madam Secretary. Well, Madam Chair, we do have a, sorry, we do have some documentation stating that the owner, Actually, I apologize. I just I do have verification that the the person speaking is a uh, principal in the Three Black Knights LLC. I do not actually see a an authorization from the owner allowing the appellant to speak today. Um, perhaps the the appellant could explain, or am I? Has this been sent and we missed it? So this, this should be under On Point Inc. LLC, which is my establishment. And the Three Black Knights is the, the building's owners, which uh, uh, rent and lease this space to me for the use of tattoos. I'm only here solely to look for the, a permit to, to be able to do tattoos legally through the city. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. I do see that now that the um, the owner is giving on point LLC authorization to speak on his behalf. Thank you. If you're ready for the history, I'd be glad to give it to you. Yes. Yeah, uh, Dear uh, Faith, just wanted to let you know you are muted. That I am muted? No, I'm just letting no, Faith know. I was it. muted, and there was a reason that I did that. So oh, that sorry. thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so on point is the name of the business, right? I'm looking at the document, the documents here. Mr. Howard? Yes, that's the name. Yes, that's the name. All right, and three black knights is the building owner. Correct. Right. Okay. That's going to become important. All right, go ahead, Ms. Kuklu, with the history of the property. Thank you, Madam Chair. The property was originally zoned general retail in 1929. In our records administration, I'm sorry, in 2006, it was changed to local retail, and in 2008, it was placed in the pedestrian retail overlay district in our records administration office we found that in 1925 a permit was issued to erect a one-story office building 1938 a permit was issued for an additional uh, store on the property 19 um sorry 1937 a permit was issued to erect a an additional store structure or addition, I'm sorry, uh, there are no variances on file. And, and that's all that I have, Madam Chair, thank you. All right, great. And you get to read the legal standard too. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, appellant is requesting a use variance and an area variance from the minimum distance requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the use variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will result in an unnecessary hardship particular to the property such that there will be no economically feasible use of the property without the variance, will two, deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and three, that granting of the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. To obtain the area of variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will, one, create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will two, deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that three granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, Mr. Howard, you have three variances that you're seeking. Uh, can you speak to each one of those for us? Yes. Go ahead. Well, I'm I'm sorry. What's what's the first one? 
Uh, well, the first one is you're not permitted in a local retail business district. The second one is you're not permitted in a general retail business district. And the third is uh, distance from residents and daycare centers. So tell us what you want to do with your tattoo parlor. Okay, so I'm a, um, I'm a private tattoo artist. I um, only operate based off of appointments of my clientele from the previous 10 years. This is my attempt to uh, be able to become more professional and take my talents to a different level and heights. I'm not open to the public only because I've just found out that I do need a permit through the city and I did not know that. So I'm just trying to take the proper steps to, be to become legal through the city so that I can continue to accommodate my clients for their, for their art. And how long have you been in business? I've been in business 10 years. I used to work out the home and then I went to a tattoo shop to become professional. And then that's when I acquired this space a year and a half ago. And I did not know that I had to have a permit. So now this is my attempt to become legit in, in a proper order and steps. So you, you occupied this space already then, is that correct? Yes, I've been in the area and I, I just need a permit to continue to do it properly. All right, so you have you've been operating in this space and you've you've been renting this space out for a year and a half. Is that right? Yes. All right. Okay, and your hours of operation you intend to be by appointment only. Yes. All right. Madam Chair, may I ask what days of the week do you book appointments? Uh, every day except for Sunday. So Monday through Saturday. Yes, correct. And how early and how late are your appointments? Um, I drop my children off in the morning, so anywhere from 8 o'clock um, up until about 9 p.m. at latest. All right. That's your last appointment, or that's when you vacate the premises? That's when I would like to vacate the premises. Okay. All right. We have your floor plans. Uh, Ms. Kukla, uh, would you like to cover the uh, correspondence that we received? Sure. We did not receive a letter or email from the council person. We did receive one email from a Pamela Moore regarding this case. She states that this landlord is a slumlord and doesn't deserve any variance from the city. They own numerous properties that are all boarded up and in terrible disrepair. They also have active housing court cases for the very slum they want to turn into the tattoo shop. See housing court case 2023-CRB-005254. They consistently dodge service of cases by using a post office box address as the registered agent for the LLC. And when a street address is required, they put the address of the post office. Very shady. Um, she does not give an address um, as a neighbor or anything like that, just her email address. And thank she you. specifically, thank you, Ms. Kukla. She's specifically calling out the building owner, not the business that is before us seeking the variance. That, that is correct. She does state that the landlord is the slumlord. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Howard, what's been your relationship with your, uh, your landlord? 
Um, we have no relationship. There has been numerous problems going on since I have been in the establishment. Uh, I supposed to take care of the inside. They supposed to take care of the outside, and it's a lot of things going wrong. But in order to continue to feed my children, I'm fixing the problems. I've even been fined by them for fixing the problems on my own. They are looking for reasons to dig in my pockets, but I just roll with the punches in order to just continue to take care of my children the best way that I can. So you've not had a good relationship with the landlord? Oh, no, not at all. And like I say, I'm just doing what I need to do so I can continue to do it legally, according to the city, by the rules, so I can take care of my children. Nothing more, nothing less. How many children do you have, sir? Oh, man, you're funny. I got seven. <laughs> you have seven. <laughs> Mr. Howard, that's a lot of kids. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be able to tattoo. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. All right, well, the variance attaches to the property. Um, so I'm going to open it up to the board for their questions and their comments at this point. Ms. Brown, would you like to, do you have any wisdom on this situation? Ms. Brown, I think you're muted now. I thank you. You're welcome. Um, I did notice as I um, looked at the photos in front of us that the awnings are torn and perhaps there there is some work uh, that needs to be done. Mr. Howard, have you put those requests into the landlord? I have not, <clears throat> only because I have the, um, like I said, I'm a private tattoo artist. So I'm not open to the public. So I have noticed that the awnings are outdated. And I went to talk to councilman, um, I, f I forgot his name, but he said that the three black knights are trying to get them updated so that they can go with the plan for the 185th reconstruction. But I have not put in that request only because I cannot get in contact with the owners. I have to go through management and management gives me the run around, so I just <laughs> don't, I just stopped trying for the last year and a half. Thank you for your uh, update on, on that situation. Sorry. Mr. Howard, you did have a conversation with Councilman Polensic? Yes, I want to go see him in person last Tuesday. Okay. Mr. Bay, who is the planner for this area? Uh, the planner for the neighborhood planner for this area is uh, Ariel Washington. Okay. Do we have any input from her or city planning on this? Yeah, um, Xavier Bay from city planning. We, we don't see an issue with, uh, with the approval of these variances. Um, as you know, our, our tattoo, um, use description in the zoning code is, is rather outdated as these establishments used to used to have a ne negative connotation in the past. Um, a, a, as we know, you know, it, in the 21st century, even people's grandmas get <laughs> tattoos. Um, so, you know, we, we don't see an issue with the use um, or, or the uh, spacing variance. Uh, the last thing I, I could mention is um, to, to, you know, just reach out to the landlord. If you, I guess, if you ever do get in contact to, to mention the uh, store renovation program, storefront renovation program, that, that, that would be a good resource for them. Um, to, to you know, just help with the uh, upkeep on the the front facade here. 
Do we um do we know who the CDC is for this area? Uh, I I do not. Um I could follow up with the applicant, look into it, um, and make make sure we connect them to the CDC and the neighborhood planner. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's give him the support that uh, might be beneficial to him uh, moving forward. Um, I'm just curious. Do you recall uh, how close uh, this is in relation to the uh, business? that we had in front of us a few weeks ago uh with um the sort of art art deco kind of look that was going to become a restaurant you recall that yeah i remember that yeah it was it was in this area was it not miss brown it's on 185th Street where all yeah. the uh, infrastructure improvements have been completed, but I don't know, you know. Uh, how close. Yeah. How yeah. The expanse of it. Okay. All right. Um, we had a comment, I think, from Ms. Leonard, right, in the chat. Yeah, I was just stating that um, there's no assigned CDC to this location, but Councilman Polenzik has a East 185th strategist and the tenant may actually have already had contact with her, but Laura Bala um, is um, working with the landlords and the tenants up and down East 185th Street for the past several years to get everybody compliant with um, city ordinances. Um, and then she'd also be, be that link that uh, Xavier was discussing regarding the storefront renovation program. Right. Is she the consultant? She is. Uh, yeah, that was before us with the case I was just talking about, right? I, I don't remember recall which case she showed up for, but I know that over the years she's um, done a ton of work along East 185th Street um, and then she's still doing that. So, okay. All right. Um, are we able to get the appellant in contact with her too? Can we share her contact information with them? Yeah, I'll have um, Xavier can share her email uh, with the appellant if he has his email information. Super. Thanks so sorry, much. Sorry, not to cut you guys off, but I am in contact with her, and she does a phenomenal job of keeping me updated weekly okay. on what's going on. Excellent. Okay. We're going to put you, uh, we're going to give you the contact information for the city planner as well. Um, any other questions or comments, board? Me. All right. Uh, who would like to do the motion on this? I will. Uh, Madam Chair, hearing the testimony of the appellant who is currently operating a storefront as a tattoo parlor uh, out of compliance with zoning and in support of, of, of issuing the variance. Um, also hearing testimony uh, that there is a coordinator and efforts to work with property owners and tenants to improve the district. I move in favor of calendar 24-020. Thank you. Could I have a second, please? Madam Chair, I second. Thank you, Ms. Rocco. Ms. Kukla, would you like to call the vote, please? Sure. Ms. Holzer? Yes. Ms. Rocco? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Vape? Yes. Calendar 24-020 is granted. It'll be ratified on April 29th and we will send the appellant a letter, but please feel free to contact our office on April 30th for further instruction. Thank you. All right, Mr. Howard, you've got some resources to work with. There is a storefront renovation program uh so um hopefully you can improve your situation there in that building and you can move on with your next steps okay yes thank you all so much i appreciate it 
Thank you. All right. Moving on to old business, we have one, two, three, and four. Without objection, board? No objection. No objection. Awesome. All right. No other affirmations or reinstatement requests. Anything else, Ms. Kukla? No, ma'am. Just want to make sure that you guys all saw that uh, updated drawing for West Avenue, the angled fence. Yes, that it was, was lovely. He did he did nine feet rather than eight. So and, so and he did it on graph paper as requested. So it's to scale. So extra points for that for him. All right, then enjoy the eclipse. Thank you all very much. Have a good afternoon. Stay safe. Bye. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye